discussion. Okay, great. Great. So as everyone here has been really good sitting still and listening, um, I think we will we will um, we'll, we will turn the, 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 the plans the plans around and first of all ask you have any questions come up that you would like someone in the panel to address? Um, I have a question to the first talk. Uh, I think it was the first one that you was right. Hold it. Martina, can you understand? Uh, no. <laughs> Please speak up. Um, the first talk we heard was about the Internet um, Society in Austria. You focus, service providers, I'm sorry. You focus your talk very much because of the topic of dating, I guess, in the security and internet for like users, particular users or personal use. But I wanted to ask if you guys also are engaged in the digital transformation, the Internet of Things, which is going to be a relevant thing and internet use for industrialized countries like Austria. So do you guys do something on that? Well, in, in respect to the, to the Internet of Things, uh, yes, we are involved. Uh, we see that, uh, again, there is a security issue right now, but also in respect to a privacy issue. Uh, and we would be very strongly opt for, say, for clear rules so consumers can actually trust uh, the devices once they're out there. And uh, as, as, uh, you've correctly mentioned that there are many legal and legal challenges whenever you're trying to you know, approach, I would say, the internet. We also see that together with IoT, there are more questions than we have on the table. At the same time, we've got an enormous pressure from the market to be the first ones to have the products on the market. Mm -hmm. So I would say there are lots of companies right now who are, I would say, they are holding back because they have the feeling that the technology isn't right now or the regulation where it should be, but still they feel the pressure that if they wait much longer, they're going to be too late on the market. So it's a huge topic right now. Is this an Austrian topic or is it a European topic? It's a European topic. And I think we, I'm representing the Austrian Association today, but generally speaking about these tops, I would strongly disencourage from having national approaches. Um, and always going for the European one because even if you're a company set up in Austria you might want to sell your services to Slovenia, uh, the Netherlands, etc. The last thing you need is an Austrian rule which has been published in the Austrian Federal Gazette mm -hmm. only in German, uh, not very helpful. So yes we're closely following but I think it's challenging everyone in the market right now. Um, I got a technical question concerning the social media monitoring projects. Um, I, I remember, I don't know about the timing here, that Facebook restricted access to public page data somewhere this year. Were you hit by this or how did you get around this? Um, yes, thank you for this question. Um, so when I said that the, the, the technical writing the code part was the easiest, yeah, one of the biggest um, challenges we had was actually getting access to the data uh, and so uh, the application to Facebook to be allowed to access public pages data took us two months. Two, two months. months? Two months. Okay. <laughs> so that's why you started so late? Or, or <laughs> did you want to start earlier? Uh, no, the plan was to start okay. um, the, the, the three weeks, um, but since I had already gone through this with Amnesty, I knew it would take, mm -hmm. uh, in Italy it took three months, um, I, yeah, we started early. Okay. okay, I would like to follow up on this one. Uh, what is the scope of the whole operation, uh, the, the, the scale of the operation? Like how many people were involved, and uh, especially the technical part of the two projects. Um, okay. Do you see Thomas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you see me? Yes. That's the scale of the operation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. The, the technical operation. Yeah, the which included the web scraping and the data. Yeah. So I wouldn't call it web scraping. We really only access data from the official Twitter and Facebook APIs. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, web scraping would go into the region yes. of stuff that is illegal and no. We went for the um, official APIs. Uh, Hence the two months waiting. Okay. 
Can I add up on this one? And what was the role of the activists? You mentioned that you uh, work with activists. What was their role? In, in uh, Italy, we worked with activists because um, they were the ones who, who determined the sentiment mm -hmm. and the topics mm -hmm. of the posts. So um, we did not opt for an algorithmic solution mm -hmm. uh, because, as I said, Algorithms in Italian, <laughs> not they're not they're even worse than the ones in German. <laughs> um, so so we, we have the activists involved, um, which also has the benefit of making people feel more in control. Like this is my project. There is something I can do about. Hate speech online. This is my contribution. And how many activists were involved? Martina, Martina, how many activists were so involved? We see social media monitoring, the European Action Monitoring, one of the activists. She may have to write her answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, one somehow, uh, somehow we only have the European Election. Okay, one of the things is that we find it. <laughs> yeah. uh, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to uh, get, um, follow up on, on the algorithms part because I've been working in the field of semantics and text analysis and would it be, and I see the Italian community is very active in, in this field. So would it be possible to use uh, existing uh, data for training and then automate this? Um, this would be one next step to, to try to do this, yes. Maybe based on the now many... Wait, by now, now we have, uh, well, Amnesty <coughs> now has a huge data set of labeled data. So anybody who wants to help them out? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> anybody who wants to try out <laughs> to try to develop the next sentiment analysis tool in Italian, please come talk to me after. <laughs> Great. So, we've been talking a lot about um, marketing spend online and social media, etc. Have you ever considered uh, not so publicly available spend, like buying likes or buying comments or buying fake profiles? Would you consider that into, into a total spend? Can you, can you actually? Is there data to analyze this? You know, that's exactly the problem. Yeah, that we we think there's need for greater accountability and greater transparency in the electoral campaign, uh, and especially in Austria in the campaign finance. Yeah, so we lagging behind uh, Western European countries, uh, Scandinavian countries, Balkan, uh, Baltic countries. They are far ahead of us in terms of transparency of campaign spending. Now, you know. For sure, that that's, uh, would be very interesting to understand how parties are spending their money and how parties are receiving their money. Yeah, and for example, I, I live back in Prague in Czech Republic, so they have a law that you have a public account as a political party, but you have to uh, show the funding you receive and the funding and the, and the expenses you spend. Yeah. So there is a, a more transparency in the accounting, and I think we also go in deep into that direction. Yeah? When it comes um, uh, to, the, to the question of uh, in-kind contributions of volunteers, or you know, like this uh, buying uh, support on social media, definitely that's something to look into in more detail. Uh, but we, we didn't have the resources and, and to look into that. But, uh, this, is, this is why we think it's important to keep, to open this black box and to, to make it shine as much light in there as possible. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, it was pretty much the same, same question about troll uh, farms or, or some other means to intervene which are not really yet. But, but you know, just about the troll farms, you know, there's a whole topic which we didn't cut upon is disinformation campaigns. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it it is. It has been hotly debated ahead of the European Parliament elections. There's a lot of there's a rapid response unit in 
in, 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 in embedded in the Commission, in the NATO, in the Baltic States, also one in Prague, you know, the, there's also one in Finland. So it's, 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 there is a disinformation uh, early detection, but it's, it's, it's probably and, and, and very often too late to respond to disinformation complaints. Yeah, but our colleagues who work with us uh, in, in this uh, election, observe, election assessment mission, the white gloves from Lithuania, they're experts in that. And also, uh, the Commission has, has uh, uh, started a project with some 15 NGOs uh, to detect early what kind of disinformation is spread and how it is spread. Yeah. So, what you mentioned with this pot farm, you know, troll farms and, and bots, which are automated, uh, uh, this, is, this is their topic. But we have not uh, looked into that in Austria. But again, you know, we try to open a field. And you know, we, we just also discovered that it's so vast that we need to come also to terms about who is doing what and who can do what, uh, and it needs to be done in a more coordinated and uh, planned manner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, if you had a wish list regarding data and metrics or platforms you need to expose for you to actually conduct pro proper monitoring, what would that be? <laughs> Wish list. Wish list. Martina, do you have a wish list that we you yeah. would like to monitor? Uh, she oh, is see. she gone? Okay. Yeah. No, she's not gone. She's only on audio. Yeah. I can hear you again now. Okay. So, I think now we'll cross like for a couple of minutes. Okay. Or less. Yeah, we were asked for our wish list of things that um, we would like the online platforms to give as data. Do you want to start? Do you have one? Uh, let me think about it. Uh, so maybe one of you. I think that they have guard the 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 kind of investment of the of politicians and organization uh, pages. Could be very very important. Mm. At this stage, Facebook only offers is only provide up with these links, uh, which tell you which. Uh, mm, mm, I mean, they, they don't tell you uh, where money come from. You know that Matthias has been in state for instance, investing. To the, uh, between 5,000 euros and 10,000 euros on particular costs, so you can understand which are the content on which politicians need mm -hmm. their strategy, but at the same time you can understand who is investing money yes. on that petition or movement or organization. So this kind of data be very useful to, to implement the watchdog role of the civil society organizations, journalism, and so on. Yeah, so Austria is not the only intransparent country, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if I if I may say uh, uh, my wish list, you know, first is to guarantee the freedom of speech and it's not touched by any regulation. So we have to be very careful about that. Because you know, we, are, we might be used to it in Austria, but in other countries, and we see that increasingly also in Europe, uh, whether it's Hungary or Poland, uh, freedom of speech is under threat. Yeah? And we need to uphold it, because authoritarian regimes tend to use whatever regulations they can uh, implement to uh, use it against opponents, uh, opposition politicians, or activists from social, uh, 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 social media or, or civil society. Yeah, that's the, my first wish. Uh, my second wish is total transparency. Yeah, we, we want to know who is spending what on what, yeah? who is targeted, yeah? and uh, why do I receive what I receive as a social media customer. Yeah? And I think there needs to be more responsibility from the side of the social media organizations, from the platforms, that they themselves have to report on what is happening in real time, not only afterwards, 
you know, we want to uh, see uh, already in the electoral campaign what is spent, how it is spent, and you know, what one topic which we have not uh, talked upon, talked about too much is different messages to different audiences. Yeah, it's a big, you know, it's a, it's a big problem that you know I receive a different message than you. You know, and they tell me, okay, we, we reduce. You reduce your taxes, and they tell you, okay, we increase the taxes. Yeah. So it's 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 this micro targeting, which is very dangerous at the end of the day. And I think we also need to have, and it's a third wish maybe, uh, a broader public debate about the ethical and moral standards we want in the electoral campaign, and where social media plays its role in that. Thank you. Maybe from from the youth industry, I'm afraid I can speculate, but usually what is being brought forward is. That we would like for, for us it's also difficult to, to know in which kind of format you would have to have it available, which data sets you really need, which we can omit. Uh, this bring, um, because there's a big uh, issue in respect to, to legal certainty. What are we allowed to hand out? Because we hand it out to you in best, in best uh, you know, um, uh, in, with best intentions, and we, we trust that you will that, that treat uh, the data safely, but. What happens if the data is, remo uh, is being transferred away from one of your machines? We are still, our users still expect, uh, and it's a good right for us to keep the data safe. But you, of course, want to match as much insight as you can get into our data. But at the same time, we are to say, well, can you guarantee? Can you guarantee us the same level of security? We think we have our, you know, of ourselves, uh, our own <laughs> systems. Um, because if you have a sample and say this ad has just been clicked by one person. This person is living in a small town outside Vienna and it might be the only person having this kind, you know, the local farmer problem. Then we're heading towards a privacy issue. We fully understand you want the data and I think we want to give you the data to a large extent, but we have to think further, you know, what happens if the data is being misused? Um, would we be found liable, etc., etc.? And when you, when you say about that there should be ethical guidelines, I think uh, ideally, there should, there should be uniform legal guidelines for all of Europe. What is considered, you know, uh, illegal, what is considered illegal, but whose moral guidelines, whose well, laws are nothing else than moral guidelines, which have been codified, which one shall we take? Shall we take the Austrian one? Shall we take the Polish one, the Hungarian one, the Chinese one? Maybe the Dutch one, the super liberal. Uh, first, it's super difficult because then we end up in each country having different moral standards and we are expected to meet all needs. So I guess this would be quite challenging for us. Thank you for this insight. Um, Rania, any wishes? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk based on the experience we had with, with this monitoring campaign. Um, so I have to say the Facebook Ads Library is great. This is a new thing, and and it would be nice, for example, if we had something similar for Twitter, which we don't. Uh, I don't know how to see who paid for what on Twitter. Um, but with Facebook, I had the following problem that I couldn't decide exactly for which time period. I wanted to to check ads, who was posting and how much was paid. So I could only say last seven days, 30 days, or 90 days, but I couldn't say, all right, well, I'm only interested in period from September 1st until uh, October 1st. Mm. Um, but even more for me, in order to analyze, for example, who is being targeted by the ads, now, um, Facebook will tell you in their library that this ad targeted this demographic distribution and this region and tells you how much percent for each ad. Now, this is interesting, um, but it doesn't tell you exactly how much was paid for each ad. Instead, it gives you a bracket. So this ad cost between 0 and 99 euros. Okay, but the next level goes from 100 to 499. And the highest level goes from 10,000 to 49,999. So when I'm faced with information like this, it becomes uh, 
well, I won't say impossible, but it becomes very difficult for me to then go back and identify, um, okay, well, this political campaign was targeting uh, 18 to 24 year olds the most. This would be an interesting insight for me. I would like to know which demographics are being targeted um, by which campaign and with which kinds of ads, but I am still unable to figure that out from, from the information that is provided. Uh, so this for me is something um, that, that is important. So if ads are being placed and they are allowed to be targeted, I want to be able to figure out how much the various campaigns are putting into targeting different demographics. Okay, so that, that, that's the issue. Do you want to add something with me? Uh, just to know, you're mentioning a couple of platforms, but also their economical um, so capabilities are very different. So something might be relatively easy to finance for, let's say, Facebook and Google, but mm -hmm. if you look at the figures for Twitter, mm -hmm. they are not making that much money right now. And what you're calling for is quite a big system to be set up and said, ideally real time, etc., etc. So, especially if you have smaller platforms, that's quite a struggle. I fully understand that you should get it, but please keep in mind that you know uh, it's also struggling for the companies to be able to provide it to you. That's why it's called a wish list. Yeah, yeah. 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 but we are coming closer we, to Christmas, so yeah, we're going to take a step. There was a yes. Um, so going back one topic to the uh, to topic of uh, buying likes and, and fans, I think that's something that's almost impossible to really monitor because it's not really something that happens out in the open. Um, so something like ads being bought by a party from Facebook, okay, that's fairly open and it's from a legal. Um, these other things are like okay, you're violating guidelines there, um, which you could be banned for technically. Um, so I think that's why it's like a, a magnitude of order more difficult to track these things. That having been said, um, I have seen, for example, which is, is quite interesting and we can't be sure, but from a different project I've seen, for example, the number of fans um, the page has. Uh, I'm not sure whether the example was from Hatze Strafes or Sebastian Kurz's page, but what you can see there in the timeline is like it's a fairly stable increase, and then you have like for one day you had like a dip of 2,000 or something like that, and um, we assume that what's happening there is that Facebook is banning um, people or banning likes for the page, which you presume were, were bought um, and are fake profiles, and then the site is buying them back. That's why there's like a strange down tick and up tick in the follow account or in the fan account, um, but of course we can't know. Um, Really, and it's just a, like a hypothesis that can be never confirmed. Thank you. Any more questions? In that case, as a social scientist, I was really shocked, and I have to pose this question or, 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 or ask maybe all of you what you think about that. Um, Austria, why, why do Austrians believe or trust social yeah. media? What the hell is going on with us? I mean, we, we always like to think of us of ourselves as a as a very Western uh, industrial country. We are one of the uh, we are the six richest in Europe and the twelfth richest in the world, and we like to think of us as being very modern and forward. And then that, which is in, why I, I would be interested in your guesses, and maybe even if one of you has one. And the other thing that I, that I felt really disturbing was um, the hate of the hate against women without even triggering this in Italy and I was I would be I mean that, that I think is very interesting is this, uh, whatever a, a cultural thing is this something that occurs or, or refer, that, that, that refers to women everywhere but we don't have we don't have any material yet but I, those were the two things in, in, in your in the numbers that you were showing that I was most disturbed by I don't know any any guesses why this could be the case in Austria? <laughs> I mean, what's the matter? Yeah, you know, uh, definitely there are guesses. Uh, yeah. you know, like, I, I particularly brought this graph because I thought it was striking yeah. as an Austrian, and uh, uh, you see the difference to Germany. Yeah, uh, but you know, there, there are the, 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 some irrational 
there's some irrational behavior in our political culture anyway. Mm -hmm. So this, this might also explain the trust in social networks and social media. Did you, yeah. did you look at that? Did you find any um, data on how many Austrians trust the state-run media or the independent media compared to social media? Yeah, there, there, there are other graphs to that as well. This is uh, by the uh, mm -hmm. Public Broadcaster Authority. You know, that was a yeah. Eurobyte uh, focus, just, which is done because, on, uh, on, same, on a basis. On the same graph that you showed, there was the uh, the dip in Turkey yeah. uh, by, I think, 11% or something mm -hmm. in um, over one year, which it's interesting, it would be interesting to see if there was the same dip in the state run, in the trust in state run media, mm -hmm. or if that remained constant and if they started believing uh, social media less when it maybe got more anti, um, had it gone over the year. Yeah, you know, it could, it could be just that people feel familiar with their social media channels, yeah, and they have FBA TV and they have uh, uh, others which are their trusted uh, informants about political uh, issues. So it could be that they feel rather comfortable and they can select whatever like, what, what they like and they believe in. And uh, there's no reason to believe, uh, not to believe in your community, so to speak. Yeah? So you probably feel in a, in a trusted environment. And you know, that could be part of the explanation. Yeah? And maybe the Germans are a bit more reflected uh, about uh, uh, the truth of it, yeah. So the Germans have built Zeitung, which is also rather big. Yeah. Yeah. We have the Kronen Zeitung, but okay. looking at the looking at the power of a single newspaper in a country, we are world champions. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not forget that, yeah. that we have been educated with the Kronen Zeitung, or half of our population has been educated by the Kronen Zeitung. Yeah. Uh, this second issue. Uh, the women they hate against no. women yeah. without even triggering it. Or, uh, but maybe someone wants to add yeah. this because I had I um, saw some. Uh, I would add on both. Uh, one is that I wasn't particularly surprised that um, we Austrians have a fairly high that you know people believe a lot in what the social media said because because uh, everybody's in their bubble and they're just having their own opinions reinforced, so what, what astonishes me is that the other ones have such low numbers, yeah. I thought that would be that would be higher, so I'm, I'm a little shocked now myself about where we stand on, in comparison to everybody else. Uh, but also that may be an aspect, what Armin mentioned about the Conan Center, is that Austrians, particularly the, the ones that read the Boulevard, mm -hmm. are not used to have many different opinions mm -hmm. on a topic. There's well, one out there. The source. Yeah. And basically, that, that's, that's what gets to. Mm -hmm. So maybe. Um, on the women issue, there's just one thing that comes to mind, and I'm sure she's not the only example, but one woman, one young woman who was hugely influential, certainly in our election, unsolicited a lot of, of unsolicited hatred was hit to her. And there's a lot of bashing of why is this young woman, you know, um, which, which she took in stride, by the way, but um, I don't know how much that boosted the numbers of general sexism in Italy. Oh, you mean all the women that were assaulted? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I mean, that, it's just something that I noticed. There were a lot of people, uh, even even in my own bubble, some popped up. Yeah, and that's not where they would normally pop up. Um, that were and 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 the, it was definitely you know it had it had something to do with her being a an even young woman. Yeah, that was. Is the problem for a lot of people. Yeah. Maybe to add on to that, you know, one big problem we face as election observers mm -hmm. is that we can't access WhatsApp. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we see more and more of the campaigns, especially in other countries outside of Europe, is happening on WhatsApp groups, close groups, like in Nigeria, and there's a lot of misinformation, uh, you know, disinformation, and hate speech circulating. And you know this is a, a, a hot topic because it's also a data privacy and, and data protection issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, who should access uh, WhatsApp groups? Should we be able to control WhatsApp groups and monitor them? Or well, what what is happening if, if uh, like in Myanmar, you know, there is a there is a violence breaking out because of social media communication? Yeah. It's not 
to blame social media, mm -hmm. you know, but people use social media yeah. and it, it's, it's, it's running rapidly, but there is miscommunication, there's disinformation and uh, uh, communicated. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do we handle that? Who takes the responsibility and who should uh, take on responsibility about that? Mm -hmm. Maybe just one remark to, to hate speech. Uh, I think it's clear platforms have to step up and you know, uh, it's made mostly a question of resources. But what we see in practice is sometimes that um, uh, cooperation and the exchange of data between national authorities and platform mm -hmm. proves equally difficult for both sides. Mm -hmm. So we as Eastern Austria are heavily advocating for a so-called single point of contact, mm -hmm. meaning there's just one institution on the side of law enforcement who is in charge of communicating with Facebook and Google. Uh, right now, if you're, let's say, one of the big platforms, and you, as every policeman more or less, can approach Google mm -hmm. trying to ask them, most probably their request will not fulfill their the quality threshold. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there are a lot, a lot of, especially uh, with uh, uh, hate speech. Which information, for example, do the platforms need? Please don't, you know, not a screenshot taken with, with hand cam, but. Uh, there are guidelines for all of this, but the training uh, in the field is relatively poor and there's lots of room for improvement. Right now, for example, we're having a discussion between platforms and Austrian law enforcement as uh, law, uh, the platforms are wishing orders to be signed or digitally um, um, signed by authorities, but Austrian authorities don't have the capability to sign documents digitally. So that means if it happens on Friday, poor luck for you, you will have to wait until Monday and the Schreiber that is open again so someone can sign it and scan it and send it somewhere else. So there's, once again, there's lots of things uh, platforms can, can improve, but we are dependent on the notices coming uh, from courts because something is also difficult for us is it hate speech, is it covered by free speech, so we rely on national courts, but this communication between these two stakeholders there's lots of room for optimization on both sides of the mm -hmm. chain. Mm -hmm. All right, we are running. We are running late. I'm, I'm going to take one, two last questions. <laughs> Thank you. Back to the high trust ratio in social media. Did you identify were there any specific group which which uh, were driven this high ratio uh, based on your analysis? I mean, did you dig deeper a bit to understand is there a specific Group which is mainly given this high results? Um, I or is it a kind of country average? I would need to go back to uh, So, the, the trust in social media graph was taken from Eurobarometer, not part of this analysis. Um, so, we have to go there to try okay. to analyze it there. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, can, I can consult the source and go back and see that there's a breakdown on age or uh, education or uh, sex and see okay, whether there's a different breakdown and who is trusting more and who is trusting less. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, I wouldn't have the answer ready now. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any roadmap of three, five people for the future, any new uh, projects? Uh, this is all nice, amazing, even 50 people. Do you have any vision how to engage people, not just Europe, let's say, I think Europe, we have GDPR, is in, in a fine state, I must say, in the US is all a lot worse, um, I think. And so how do, you, how do you see the future? How do you think you can engage people, engage people to volunteer? How much help do you get from, the company, from companies and for the countries? Yeah. Do we have a vision on that? I think this is almost like an unofficial wish list here. <laughs> but I think it's really good for a last round yeah. of statements. So, um, is there a vision how to bring this project, these projects further, how to expand the monitoring, how to, how to involve people on a higher level more intensely? Okay, well, I, I will start. From um, my point of view, um, my wish is that it becomes less work for people like me. Um, I don't think that social media monitoring should be a specialized and expert activity. Uh, this should be something that is carried out 
by people and society in general, uh, we shouldn't leave it up to somebody else and say, uh, I don't know, I don't understand, I don't have the skills, the tools, or whatever. So my personal wish is that it becomes easier to figure out what the social media landscape looks like, that uh, it's a broad discussion so that we can all come to a consensus what is allowed, what is not allowed, and then the, the sort of legal pathways for um, for making sure that that things happen the way they should um, should should be smoothed out after we all have this conversation. Well, you know, I, I think uh, engagement is always wished for, yeah, and and I think. Uh, from our experiences, as you know, basically election officials who are working outside of Europe and then come back and try to do something, we see that you know if we start something, we, something else comes into into move. Yeah? So engagement uh, for you know attracts engagement. Yeah. So uh, we we were surprised when we started this election assessment mission in Europe. You know we didn't have any budget at the end. And we got 65 colleagues who worked on a pro bono basis with us on that project because they believed in it. Yeah, so I think you know there, there is a lot of uh, goodwill out there, and you know it just needs to be pushed uh, or, or stimulated <coughs> or, or attracted. Yeah, but it, I think also when it comes to uh, this social media monitoring, uh, we are now in a phase probably where we trial and have a, a trial and error phase, and we need to figure out okay what is the best way of uh, coming to terms with it, but uh, like it goes hand in hand with what I said before that we need to have a, a political uh, majority opinion. What do we want social media to play? What what role should it play in our electoral campaign? Yeah, or where do we want our electoral campaign to take place? Yeah, and how transparent do we want our voters to be? Yeah, because I'm I'm, I'm scared that Facebook knows before the elections take place, what is the result of the elections, yeah? You know, and that's not far off the, uh, the reality, yeah, about all the data uh, we, we give away as users of social media. Thank you. So, Martina, can you hear us and can we hear you? Okay, she's talking. Okay. So, maybe Alexander in the meanwhile, do you have any? Uh, Wishes for the a vision? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> as long as you're looking at me, I, yeah, I, 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 uh, well, uh, I guess my point is please, please keep approaching us, and please keep criticizing us, please keep telling us what you think we are doing wrong. Uh, and there's just one thing I would really like to keep you in mind very often we are saying no. Uh, but please don't, there's no, there's no, we don't want to cooperate with you, but very often it's a, it's a no, we don't know how to comply with you, or for example, we don't know if it's how to do it in a legal way. Mm -hmm. So please keep challenging us, and I would say we industry, we, we are, we're almost dependent on your input to see how we can evolve, because then we're going to be better than our competitors, that's competition, that's what we are for. And if you want to get an insight what industry is thinking, for example, we've got a lot of our materials here, so you can take a look and see what's troubling us and where we think, you know, uh, things should be moved forward. And normally we take a look, this is free material, please um, take home with you whatever it looks interesting to please, you. Especially the children's book, yes, one is about really 500 gram, it's super heavy, please make us carry it all the way. Children, to five, I sincerely ask you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Martina um, said that finding tools which allow citizens to get involved. Yeah, well, the involvement part, I think, and the engagement part is uh, is definitely something that everyone can think of and should think of because um, the better we are, and the, the, be the more we are challenging uh, the industry, um, maybe then something more is happening. Well. Thanks a lot, that was a really interesting discussion. It's really getting hotter by the minute yeah. in this room, so I think um, we've all had a great evening. Thank you very much for listening so closely and um, for your great contributions. Yeah, there's still, there's still some drinks and uh, sandwiches outside. Oh, okay. uh,